Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where local community members discuss a wide range of topics from serious to whimsical. Welcome to another edition of Curry Cafe. My name is Ray Gary, and I'll be hosting this show today. We have just two participants and me. And today we're going to be talking about global warming and the windmills that uh, evil people want to put up and destroy our view and do all kinds of mean and nasty things. (laughs) Anyway, uh, why don't we just start with you, Rick, and we'll go around the table clockwise, which shouldn't be hard to remember because there's only three of us. Okay. Well, hi, all. I'm uh, Rick McNamer, volunteer here at KCIW 100.7. And just happy to be here to join the discussion and see what uh, other people have to say. Important subject. Yeah. Well, I'm Jim Newman, and I'm always up for a good discussion, whether we um, share the same opinions about things or differing opinions. You can always learn, but in order to do that, you got to shut your trap long enough so that you can listen to other people. And hopefully that's what you're going to do today on KCIW 100.7 on your FM dial. Is that where we are? Yeah. Oh, I thought this was KFUG. <laughs> Wrong place. <laughs> you mixed up. Uh, all right. <laughs> so starting out with climate change, I guess, which is kind of related to the windmills, uh, there's an awful lot of people out there who think that climate change is the worst thing that's ever happened to the earth and then there are other people who say it's nothing at all it happens all the time and um, we need to do some research on that and what I find out and it's pretty much the same thing that's being said for many years is that 97% of the world's climate scientists say it's the earth is not only warming but we're causing it and I don't know why people seem to think that all this stuff we're spewing into the sky and the atmosphere isn't having some effect worldwide, but it just makes sense. And I fall into that category to me, too. I mean, of course, not a scientific expert, but just looking around and reading and, and hearing about the climate change, I pretty much believe, of course, yeah, I think we do cause it. And I think it's a real deal worldwide with um gosh the the icebergs melting the islands losing their land with uh with flooding and just other various things again i'm no expert i just i i have faith if you will in the world scientists more than the people that deny it that's pretty much where i come from you talk about losing land do you see the news reports that some uh, a tiny island off in the North Sea has had to move their village back a uh, hundred yards or move to another island or something like that. And uh, some of the villages I used to go to in Alaska have actually had to move to a different location to get away from the oceans rising. And, you know, people in Brookings saying, yeah, well, that's the Polynesians' problem or the Eskimos' problem. But <laughs> I may a little closer to home, but be uh, Miami is... Uh, having a lot of problems with uh, much higher tides. They uh, will get a couple inches of tide on the main streets, and they're looking at Miami not being habitable in its present state in not too many years. Like most of the climate change things we hear about is in, in uh, 2075, there's this. And, and all of us are listening saying, sorry, I'll be gone. But no, now they're, they're talking about places like Miami in, in 10, 20 years. Uh, what's happening is the, the, the water table is rising from the salt water. And that's going into the sewers, and then the sewers are backing up into your backyard, which sounds it's not going to be the place to go to like it once was. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going I'm to occupy the... Um other side of this uh, discussion and say there is so much information out there, both um, pro-climate change and no climate change. I find it really difficult to discern who's really, if anybody, the definitive arbiter of the subject matter. 
because there are, to, from what I've been able to find, there is as many scientists saying that it's not the apocalyptic um, thing that um, the people who are in the green movement are saying that it is or it will be. So you you cited Ray ninety seven percent of the scientists. I, where did you get that figure from? That's a well known figure that's been bandied around for years. The climate scientists who are not working for the oil company. Uh, well, yeah, that. but I there are the climate the oil... scientists that are working for other funding sources that give a skewed view to also. So we have to get coal, oh, that's coal companies and there's oil companies and oh, it's called well, the green energy the people, movement. The people who who are fighting the climate change things are the people who are making money from the things that are causing climate change. Right? I'm not fighting climate change. Oh, climate okay. change is real. It has been happening for millions of years cyclically on this planet. Okay, never with this, or without mankind. Never this quickly, though. That that may be a sp sped up process, but then again, we're kind of at the threshold, according to some scientists, for another mini ice age. So where do we go from there? Who do you believe? Who can you actually say, you know, this group or this person, man, they've got it dialed in and they've covered everything and there we go. Yeah, Jim, I believe yeah, I, I've heard that too, and I have heard the ninety-seven percent figure debated back and forth. Uh, but like you said, who do you believe? Um, again, that's where my faith goes. The uh, the stuff that I read about, the scientists that I have read, I, I I guess I just have more faith in them. And it seems I don't see the agenda really that they would have. I see the agenda of the oil companies. And people, uh, the coal, oil, whatever, that the, the agenda they want is that it's bunk and we need to keep doing that. I think it's damaging our environment um, by continuing our depend, dependence on fossil fuels. And that's where I think the wind, the wind farms come in or the, the turbines. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy there too so far, but um, overall, fossil fuels is 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 finite they're, 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 we're going to run out one day and the more we use them i feel the more damage it's doing to the environment you know okay. uh, um, after the jets flew into uh, new york city and and uh, the other places on 9 11 if you remember all air traffic was stopped and i mean this mm -hmm. included like the little cessnas in in alaska and all and during that what was it less than a week wasn't it just a few days the skies cleared immeasurably. It was incredible how different yeah. things looked. Just Having lived in Los Angeles, we've seen this, saw the same things happen. Yeah. You know, um, there's no no doubt that there is you know tangible, palpable, smellable, visionable <laughs> pollution going on. That you is know, for sure. That, that happened to, uh, to have happened during during hunting season in Alaska, and uh, with no planes flying, a lot of people. Uh, go hunting by being dropped off by a guide off in the mountains someplace, and then I'll, I'll come back and get you in four days or something like that. Well, there were a lot of people sitting in their tents not having no idea what the hell was going on, and the planes not coming back for them. It took, uh, they were, took a while for them to find out when the planes finally did come that back. That would be disconcerting. <laughs> interesting situation, yeah. yeah, but yeah. It's happened more than once that the pilot has died or quit the business or whatever and just not come back for his people, but that was a different one. Yeah. So, I mean, we can see demonstrable changes in what's happening environmentally when something like that happens. Okay. It's like, oh, got it. If we utilize less um, fossil fuels to power our engines, um, yeah, we could make a difference on the planet to what degree, though, because we can't even get a straight answer out of our own EPA well, with but, regards to if we uh, enacted these extremely draconian policies of um, mitigating uh, climate change, to what degree would it have an impact on, you, on our world? You say you lived in L.A. Um, now I can remember going to L.A. in about 19... Oh, I don't know, late 70s, it mm -hmm. would have been, took my kids to Disneyland and having to uh, 
drive with the windows open and the air on because they were having a smog event, and it was literally like thick fog. Now, I understand they don't have those anymore because of some of the things that L.A. did. Yeah, they, they've uh, changed their uh, environmental policy with regards to uh, combustion uh, vehicles, you know, and that Is was Is that good. one of the draconian things you were talking about? The draconian things? You, just, you said that, that the climate people want No, no that's not draconian. That's okay. common sense. In okay. peop, uh, places like Tokyo and um, uh, Mexico City yeah. and Athens, Greece AK. and London and yeah. cities in uh, China and India, they could all benefit from taking a look at you know how they're polluting the environment using combustion engines. What, what there, were the draconian things you were you said that they want us to do the draconian things well the things i can think of is um eat bugs not meat oh. that's pretty draconian okay well <laughs> nobody's being forced to do it though not yet but <laughs> we haven't you know gone to the um um the new world uh, order and that's one of the things that that's on next their plate. Week we'll be talking about something. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a whole <laughs> other ball of wax. But yeah, there's some really kind of interesting ideas on how to, to do away with um, pollution in general. Okay, the United States adopts some of these plans, costs them trillions of dollars to do it, with what discernible effect on the planet if you've got developing third world countries and big uh, producers of pollution like China and India and Pakistan and um, Brazil um, not adhering to any of the international policies. I think they are, though. I think China is working no. hard to do away with their They're pollution. opening up 400 new coal-fired fi um, power plants this year and next year. 400. Oh. <laughs> I, <laughs> that, that's I, I, not I don't reducing. know that number, but I think they are working to, to do away with uh, pollution. And I don't know about the other countries you mentioned. I don't know anything at all. When I, uh, years ago, I heard that, that uh, uh, everyone in China wants to own a car, and I'm picturing the bicycles that aren't creating any pollution at all being traded in for even Hondas or something, and I thought, oh, that's the end of the world right there. But China is, in fact, doing a lot of electric car production. Ah, the polluting electric car. All right. The Let's less talk about polluting those. electric car. Uh. <laughs> And there again, it depends on maybe where you live. Uh, and the other thing about electric cars, I said a couple of weeks ago, electric cars are in the Model T phase right now. Right. We're pretty much working with the original batteries that they started out with, and they uh, uh, we're making improvements, but there are big improvements on the, on the horizon for making batteries in a more economical and environmentally friendly ways. They're... And I've heard that was a big deal about the electric cars, yeah. the lithium, lithium batteries. Yes. Mining lithium and, is a problem. Yeah, and, and the, it, they, were, they are a problem, but I guess I just, I hope that in the future, younger, smarter people will figure out how to do that a That's little bit. That's why better. I'm saying this is a Model T stage. Because the, as far as fossil fuel vi uh, vehicles, and, and we can't do away with those right away, I don't believe. We, uh, we got to phase this in somehow, and I guess maybe we are to an extent, but... Um, yeah, hopefully they'll be able to figure out that pollution problem with the with the batteries. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think don't the electric vehicles still I do think a better they do. job? The, it's it's not quite as good as it is if you're in a place where the electricity is provided by a coal-fired power plant. But if you're someplace like uh, like here, where our, our Electric is renewable, isn't it, I think? It's hydroelectric. Hydro, yeah. yeah. It's more environmentally friendly. Yeah. And it's just more fun to drive. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you run out of juice at the end of 270 miles. No. Uh, <laughs> well, that's to, another I, thing I, I think I, that would eventually... I have, to, I have to partially agree with you that that would not be... Wouldn't that be improved day. in the near future, too? You can go longer. There's going to be more charging stations, yeah, I would the, imagine. The, the, the car that I have is a, is a very, very minimal basic car. And it, if I'm lucky, it'll go 70 miles in the summer on a level, a level road. Um, at this time of year, it loses quite a bit, actually. Uh, makes it a lot. It's a grocery getter, in other words. It's the cheapest one I think probably ever made. 
it serves my purpose perfectly because 99% of the driving I do is within its range very easily. Um, I forgot the point I was going to make. Uh-oh. Oh, but <laughs> they, they, uh, the, the average one I think now is probably getting well over 200. So, or enough you can, can make it to Medford and back or get to Medford one way and then go to a supercharger or something like that. Yeah, I think electric uh, EVs are ideal for big cities where you don't have to drive oh. far, you know, and you can keep that pollution out of uh, the city, uh, city centers and things like that. But for places like we've got here in the Midwest where you've got large driving distances, unless you've got a well-organized um, a network of charging stations, we're not there yet. You know, we're still working on still it. You know, everything tea. seems to be in process, you know, but um, we need to learn, okay, patience. We're not going to, you know, cut off the oil spigots uh, instantaneously. It's going to take decades to do this. Can you, how many things do you think in Fred Meyer's use petro, uh, petrochemical products for packaging? Oh, oh, all? Yeah. Awful. Yeah. Perhaps. You do away with oil, and what do you do? Well, what, that's well, what you we do. do. we do away is... with a lot of that packaging. Hmm? Why don't we do away with a lot of that packaging? I come home from the grocery store and spend 10 minutes throwing away stuff. In, Some... As an example, in I, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I've been told this, in Germany, it's illegal to sell a tube of toothpaste in a box. Why is it come in a box? I the agree. Toothpaste can be in a bin. You take the tube of toothpaste out, and yeah, and you, yeah. Uh, there's well, all God. sorts of reasons, you know, aesthetically, um, practicality. You ever try to to stack uh, tubes of toothpaste, you, you know, on a shelf without a box? You don't have to stack them. You, if you, them if you bin. go in a grocery store, <laughs> well. in the in in that section, they all have little bins where you can buy the travel size things, so that things go. Yeah. So there's no reason a tube of toothpaste couldn't go in those yeah. little bins. I mean, there are solutions. Whether they're going to be acceptable to the general public, that's a whole other question. Well, eventually, I think as far as the general public is might, they're going to have to adjust. I think that the packaging is a big deal, off subject a little bit. But, yeah, the packaging well, on the, the subject. plastic junk that we have, uh, uh, every pair of socks I buy has got two or three of those little plastic things that mm-hmm. they don't need them. There's thousands of them. If you try, I cut it off, try to get rid of it, it flies, and I can never <laughs> find it in my place. I mean, well, it's, it's all of that. The little things stick in right. your sleeve. There, and and, and why? you find them, why you can't get there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's a... I mean, we, well, we, you, we've got want... plastic bottles, uh, yeah. you know, that contain everything. If you all want to go back to glass, that's great. Well, again, yeah, but it still shower, takes a lot of energy to create glass. I don't want glass in the shower. <laughs> and if you buy something from Amazon, uh, who knows? You know, he comes off the truck with this box that's the size of an army footlocker. <laughs> and, and a his, box, yeah, in and a box, the, in and, a box. And there's six, eight uh, AA batteries in there or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That I, too. I, bought so, I got something delivered the other day that, that was long and skinny, and it fit right perfectly into uh, an Amazon box that was the same size. And I don't know why they didn't just put a label on the on the box the product came in. I, and we used to do that. Uh, I don't know. I think, as far as back to the packaging and that, I think the plastic industry, if you will, I mean, I think of, oh, God, the graduate, the movie. Yes. Remember the <laughs> plastics? Yeah. Man, that was true. It was true. <laughs> Now, now what he should say is, dispose of plastic. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what he's... Right, right. So they got this bug or something that's supposed to eat the plastic, and I understand well, that it's... Okay, that's... It's, yeah, it's the, just as bad as the plastic or The worse. plastic ball in the ocean somewhere. I mean, this is, again, what I hear and read. Right. I, I think that... The island. A, a, yeah, <laughs> I think that's a fact. And uh, the last... Uh, last, uh, I did hear that some kind of microorganism they've right. found that can kind of mm-hmm. yeah. eat that will... God bless whoever found that, or who, well, except if it you really know, mat- works. matter is indestructible, so it's gonna it's gonna remain somehow or other. They're gonna go through that bug and be smaller, or right. what? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But this... And and they're trying to to 
that island you're talking about, they're, they're scooping it up, right? They're sending these uh, big yeah. ships out to scoop it up. And then right. what the hell do they do with it then? I don't well, know. They bring I, it back I have to, also back read. Back to China where, where they'll put it on another beach. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I've read, again, uh, some of these tropical islands we were talking about, they're inundated with plastic that I guess we or other countries ship, and it ends up on their shores. And they don't know what to do with it. Right. Some somehow I don't understand all the trade situations, but some of these companies or countries have to take if they're taking recycling stuff, they have to take things that they can't really recycle. Right, right. So they have places they take it out in the woods, sort of. Yeah, speak. I um, I think it was on the Sunday morning show last week did a segment on the uh, electronics recycling uh, industry mm -hmm. in South Africa. I saw that. Yeah, that was horrific. Little eight-year-old kids tripping around and broken up computers trying to get some wire, and then they they throw this component in the, in the in a fire to burn it so they can get the um, the copper from the component, and it's burning plastic and all this. Yeah, it's like a know, giant I'm, burn pit, you know. And it, and we've we've got you know our military veterans from the Middle East are uh, just starting to uh, experiencing the downsides of all that stuff, and. It's it's their own version of Agent Orange, you know, mm -hmm. all the stuff that they've inhaled over over their period of time there. So the the bottom line is uh, we, there's too damn many of us if we want to look at uh, pollution. I, I we, was, we are way too successful as a species. I, I was no other to, species would po would 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 populate to the degree that we are. I do believe population is a problem. I know people can banter that a lot back and forth, but. I think there's becoming too many of us yeah. worldwide. Hey, you nature has a way of handling that. That's why they develop viruses <laughs> and bacteria. Well, seriously, could, very well true. Could be true. Yeah, I, I mean the black black death of uh, you know the black plague or black plague yeah. of the 1500s. Right. I mean that did in what 70 percent of the population of Europe. Hmm. You would think. Is we in uh, um, and World War One and wow, two yeah. millions? That's what right. we need is a new global uh, <laughs> World war. war. Well, I, World war. Out there. <laughs> I think it's starting. You know, that might be the subject for two weeks from now. The yeah. war, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I've always maintained the attitude that we need to be good stewards of our planet. Absolutely. We, we yeah. need I think somebody to be, else said that way back in history, didn't they? Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, it might not be an original thought, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we, need, we need to do the things individually and community-wise that hopefully can address some of these issues. And that includes becoming part of the political process when various bills come up to Congress to, to take a look at. And it's going to be a tough slog because you've got uh, all these um, uh, lobbyists that are just handing out cash mm -hmm. hand over fist uh, to get their agenda taken care of, which may not be in the interest of, you know, this country or the world at large. That's definitely part of our government that we need to do something about the fact that a uh uh, a politician has to spend 80% of his time fundraising. And yeah, just to get reelected. Sucking yeah. up to people and, and passing bills that are ridiculous. All right. But we're straying from the subject topic. Um, I, I am always heartened when I see reports on, uh, and these are scientific shows where they have gone and done ice core samples and they have seen that you know, tens of thousands of years ago, the CO2 levels were higher than they are now. They had temperature fluctuations on the, the surface of wherever they're testing that uh, were as high or higher than what we've experienced in the last um, two uh, centuries of recordable data kind of stuff. So, yeah, it does happen. They they do I, that. I, I, <laughs> Ray's giving me, I've, giving me this I've, I've stink eye look. I've missed those programs that say things were once as bad as they are now. No, they well, and, and how do you think that we've had such an, uh, a, a species die off before mankind ever came onto this planet? What were the the causative factors for that kind of stuff? Are you talking about the the 
When the dinosaurs all died? No, I'm not talking about fireballs and meteorites and all that kind of stuff. There's other natural things that happen out there. I mean, we've got right now, we've got bacteria and viruses that will destroy herds of wild animals. Herds of cattle, herds of chickens. Chickens. How many, just not avian er, flu or er, earlier this year, the avian flu. I mean, how many tens of millions of chickens were destroyed worldwide? That's all I eat. Well, you better Don't get Don't you tell <laughs> me chickens are in problem. <laughs> I have an air fryer and I cook chicken. I know. Chicken's good. <laughs> but That's... see, nature does its own thing, you know, without mankind messing around with it. And if we can understand how that happens, then we could probably develop a game plan to work alongside it or to synergistically improve it. Yeah, part of that goal, that game plan would be to get rid of uh, burning fossil fuels. I mean, uh, coal is just an awful thing. Uh, uh, it beats cow dung. Well, we could do that, but there's <laughs> but cows are a problem as well. So oh, yeah, so let's thing. do away with them and eat Actually, bugs. Actually, eating, well. <laughs> eating meat is a, a very bad thing for the environment, but that's another subject, I think. Well, it is, but it goes right along with the climate. Don't exactly. We're talking. Yeah. And I have heard, hey, I'm a, I'm a meat eater, love my ribeye steaks occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, but the overproduction, if you will, of uh, the cattle industry... I've heard it does. It can do a lot of damage with uh, the droppings in the streams if they have free range. And, and the, uh, um, uh, people uh, laugh when you say it, but the methane from cows methane. from burping and farting. I know. Yeah. If you've ever owned a horse, they fart a lot. <laughs> I, I don't know if cows are in that same. But it, and I know, Jim. I know. I mean, it's like the opposite might be people. And I know there are people that say we need to stop eating meat now, and it, that's just not going to happen. No. And it can. You have uh, pe people with uh, the families that run these farms. I mean, but I think there are changes that can be made and really uh, need to start happening um, to make this a better place to live. I I know what you're saying, too, about the ice samples. I've seen that, too, mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of years ago. Right. Um, but I think we've been, I think it's kind of, been exacerbated with all of the the uh, oil, the fossil fuels that we've been pumping into the air. Mm -hmm. uh, my opinion, <laughs> not a scientist, mm -hmm. but I think it's come along. Uh, the uh, uh, global warming, if you want to call it, uh, I think the temperatures have definitely been getting hotter. If I'm not mistaken, there overall, yeah, over uh, the last hundred I, years, it's been up. It's drop offs and it's level points, yeah, but it, or, it's, true. it's up. True. Um, I mean, I grew up in the Sacramento Valley, and I wouldn't want to go back there <laughs> anymore. We have a lot of people live here because they've been run out of where they came from because it's 100 degrees all summer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the word is out there. But that just didn't start. I'm sorry? That just didn't start. I no, mean, no, no, no. <laughs> but with, again, the population becoming larger, and then in Sacramento anyway, where I, I mean, where I, grew up good heavens you go down there now and it's just chock-a-block oh yeah uh asphalt jungles i call yeah. them. right strip malls there's homes a condos farm yeah. hardly left out there no anymore. there's not that's the really sad thing uh, you know progress we need to house the people we do mm -hmm. um but i don't know that it, i guess that isn't my idea of great progress i kind of like the uh Looking at the field or the the foothills that were yeah. empty before, that now they're just covered over with suburban tracks. Well, yeah, we need to understand that everything the the farm fields, uh, as well as the high density housing in the inner cities, they all exist for a reason. Okay, and if we can somehow figure out what the balance of that might be, because you do away with all the farmland. You don't got food. I was listening to a program on the radio not too long ago, well, actually it was a couple of years ago, that these people that own sustainable farms where they pretty much live in a microcosm almost, they're growing their own food and blah, 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 blah. And the, uh, the end of it for this, this guy's uh, 
solution was we need to do away with all the cities like New York and stuff because we don't need them and we are proof that they don't need them. It was pretty narrow thinking. You know? I would like <laughs> yeah, to see yeah. New York stay, New right. York's done away with as well, but no. Right. He needs to look at all that stuff he has, and some of that has gone through a, a New York City someplace. Yeah, I mean, we have shipping ports uh, on all the coasts, you know, other th well, other than between us and Canada. So is you, are you going to close those as well so people don't have that coming in? Uh, how do you affect change in a rational manner? Balance. You, you said balance. That's, that's a huge right. deal. Um, and again, I don't have the, the magic answer. But balancing all of that is what we need to try to do, I suppose. You, you think about that, and then you think about, gee, I got a car that gets great mileage, so I'm doing a lot for the environment. Well, you're doing something for the environment. I don't know if everybody did it, but... Well, and then and you see a ship go by or, or uh, yeah. an 18-wheeler. One little thing I do, I did when I, I say Sacramento, I also lived in Yuba City just north of there. Mm -hmm. They had one of the best farmer's markets I've ever been a part of with, with all that agricultural land that they have mm. and go shopping there rather than at the, we had Rayleigh's and Safeway and all of that stuff where the fruit comes mass produced with little stickers on it and it tastes like junk. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, it's just something little, but I, you know, I, I, I valued those small little families that, and they're becoming <laughs> fewer and further between, I think, or less because they just can't make it, but there still were some uh, smaller family farms down there that sold their wares at the yeah. farmer's market. Yeah, we're seeing... And we an, have one here. Yeah, we're seeing um, a kind of like an explosion of the uh, concept of uh, farm to table. Yes. And there's actually companies that will box up mm -hmm. food for you and ship it. And, you know, there's uh, companies that do like the, the butcher box they right. do um, the, the protein meats, you know, and stuff like that. And these are small production, um, I think, more environmentally friendly and responsible than the huge feedlots um, that we see running across the United States. Can that handle New York? Uh, something like That's that couldn't handle a block in New York. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I don't know, what we're, what we're, what we're, what we're at, I think, huh? Well, yeah, and, and the demand is, is there. As long as the demand stays, and there's going to be somebody filling that, uh, that need. You know, how they fill it, that's a question. Yeah. And then, okay, so let me finish the, the thought here. Okay, so we're, we're at the point where we go, okay, you're going to fill the need. But in order to do that, we're going to have to develop a lot of governmental regulations for you to do that. And government regulations, I'm sorry, a lot of them just don't make any sense. But they benefit a certain constituency within the halls of power. So what do you do? I wonder if you could do it by, uh, instead of making a regulation, uh, you just teach the people why you need to do these these kind of things reduce your meat consumption or whatever that you might want to make a a regulation out of right uh i just saw something the other day that the considering making menthol cigarettes illegal uh well, more education to tell these stupid people that cigarettes menthol are out there other rather than having a whole nother law and now we'll have a black market in cool cigarettes right. coming from someplace. You know, and the good news is, statistically, I just read this uh, a couple weeks ago, that uh, teenage uh, smoking is down. Yeah. So obviously the uh, advertising programs and uh, public uh, information uh, is working. And I think that's where we're going to have to look at starting the change at is at the um, school level individuals. Well, whenever I see a young kid smoking now, I'm surprised. You don't see it. Certainly nothing like it used to be. Right. You go to Europe, my God, you can't breathe if you go on a train or something. Yeah, it's still hot and sexy over there, yeah. I think. <laughs> and that's what we grew up on, too, as yes. far as cigarettes. Yes. Right. And it was a cool thing to do. Yeah. Luckily, I got out of that a long time ago, yeah. but uh, uh, hey, it's... I, I, w I went through the channel several years ago from, oh, wow. from uh, France to, to London, and... Uh, 
It's just a regular train for most of it. You know, you're riding through the farm fields. Under the ocean. Go, going fast as hell. But just, <laughs> and then you go into the tunnel. And oh, okay. I didn't realize everybody was as scared as I was because all the cigarettes are lighting up all over the place. <laughs> oh, people say, wow. Calm those nerves. I didn't, I didn't think too much of it until as we were getting on the train, you had to go through security like you're getting on a plane. And I thought, oh, my God, somebody could be on here with a bomb and mm -hmm. they're going to blow us up halfway between Paris and London. And, oh, but anyway, it was an experience. Oh, I won't do it again. I'm very claustrophobic. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't want to do it. Before we go, I had a couple, a few things on this wind farm turbine thing. I had some pros that I wrote down and cons. Uh, reduces greatly the damage to the environment uh, by not using fossil fuels. I believe it will create green jobs via the maintenance that's going to have to happen in the components and all of that. Uh, it, and wind is an infinite power source not finite, um, and it hopefully will stabilize the cost of electricity and reduce uh, supply problems. Could I, could I back up just go. one more item before we go on with oh, what you were ahead. saying, Rick? Uh, a, a lot of the people that are scoffing now at, uh, at global warming were the same people who were scoffing at the, remember the hole in the ozone layer and mm. uh, how we were creating that, and I can... Clearly remember seeing Rush Limbaugh on television say, there's no hole in the ozone raver, and if there is, we're not causing it. Well, yes, we were causing it, and it's down within, by 19, 2040 or something, it's supposed to be closed back up again, just by eliminating hairspray and having very strict regulations yeah, on how... Uh, carbons, yeah, repellents, yeah, yeah. Uh, deodorants, uh, yeah. And uh, um, air conditioning stuff is done. So oh, yeah. regulation can do it, and sometimes science is right, Jim. Well, I didn't. I never said it was wrong. Oh, no, no. Which scientist you're listening to? Well, I, <laughs> I choose to listen to you the way I want to listen to you. I hear what I it's like the Bible. I only know the things I can criticize. <laughs> oh, good. And I'm always reminded of that old saying: "Follow the money." Yes, exactly. Okay, Rick. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Um, and I wanted to uh, backpack if that's the right one uh, on Jim's about government regulation too. Yeah, they can be over overburdening sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I do get the Sunday San Francisco Chronicle. I read that, and they're having one heck of a problem with or without needles. Uh, without needles, <laughs> I, I chose that option. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but they're kind of a, over over regulation. I was reminded of the over regulation I had. I believe it was in the very late seventies. Uh, I, I put a uh, a grocery bag on my on my um, car seat, and the little light was lighting up, you know, seat belt, seat belt, seat belt. Oh, And right. back in, in, I think it was the early 60s, they, for a very short time, made cars that you couldn't start unless the seat belt was, was uh, totally right. engaged. And I can remember my sister talking, bitching about coming home from the grocery store, having to put a seat belt on her grocery bags. Hmm. So, those cars would probably be uh, super collector's items now because you don't you don't see them in the car show anymore. No, right. right. No. Well, and I'm going to bounce around. You said grocery bags. We'll go there real quick. We, we, I think we the world almost is a throwaway society to me. I oh, was God, big. Yeah. I was glad they came up with the plastic bag. I know it ticked a lot of people off. I've been in stores where oh my gosh, I've seen people go off. What do you mean you're going to charge me for that? And and there's issues there too. I know. They're not perfect, hmm. but God, my wife and I bought our bags oh, 25 years ago. The I thought that was a good reusable idea. Reusable bag, huh? The, yeah, the yeah. reusable bag. Sometimes I'm in the store and I realize I forgot it, and I actually go back out in the rain and get the bag because yeah, I feel so guilty taking the cardboard <laughs> bag. But um, now, now I lost train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. But, well, the uh, yeah, we're just a throwaway society, and that's... That causes a lot of uh, the problems that we have, I think. God, I'm going to bounce have around you, a little bit more to the every time I take a walk at, around here with beautiful, our beautiful beaches. I can't tell you the amount of little crap that people just throw on. It, it yeah. just irritates the hell out of me. Have you ever been to Mexico? Yes. And in rural, it was rural in a, Mexico, anyway, it's like... No, no just Cabo San Lucas, one of those Oh, okay, you might where, say, oh, has it snowed? No, it hasn't snowed. Those are all plastic bags for the first time. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen it around here too. 
you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, then I got lost real quick. I'll go okay. back to the pros. Well, well, yeah, we'll go back to bags real quick while okay, you're getting your thoughts organized. Go ahead. You know, and this is the beauty of science, okay? So they created plastic bags, obviously a petrochemical product, okay? They served a lot of great purposes. They probably saved a, a few hundred million trees in the process, which gives off CO2, which benefits the plant. So um, at any rate, now they're developing bags that are biodegradable so that you don't have to worry about that plastic bag ending up in the ocean. Do you have to worry about them biodegrading while you're carrying them into the house? No, it, <laughs> it, it has to be a more of a long-term exposure to uh, moisture. But it's yeah. so simple, like Rick said, just to have your own bags. You know, I have, I have about five of them in the back of my car. That's, yeah. And then inside that, I have uh, uh, mesh, pla mesh bags that I put the fruit and things in, rather than, rather right. than uh, the well, you're a good shopper, Ray. Yes, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you're better than I am because I haven't gone there yet. But <laughs> that's a good point. That is a good point. I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm very environmentally conscious. The fact that I live in a house that's four times bigger than I need has yeah. nothing to do with it. You've got a nice footprint up there. <laughs> and I'm in a 300. There were three people in studio. three people in the family when I bought that house. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I think I covered pretty much the the pros of what I come up with the uh, wind turbines offshore. And again, Ray, we were talking uh, the, as far as the aesthetic. Uh, effect of looking I out. I can't believe how many people have mentioned that to me. Who? Tourists won't come here anymore if there's windmills out there. Well, and, and again, that might, some might not. I, I doubt it, but it, we don't want that's people what that I, I can't put my finger on. I don't know. Would it bother me to look at that? That's I, like dating a girl that cares what kind of shoes you wear. We don't, <laughs> we don't want tourists that are that shallow. No shoes <laughs> to be environmentally. Then you're friendly. a SoCal kid. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Uh, well, one of, uh, before we get too far into windmills, one of the things we could do very simply, and it wouldn't cost anything or very little, is uh, the way we build houses. We can have uh, do a lot of passive things when we build a house, not only putting more insulation, which doesn't cost very much when you're doing it, but just uh, orienting the house so that it gets the summer sun or the winter sun or whatever and in my my workshop in Alaska, the, uh, it had eaves that were far enough over that it co covered a lot of the windows. So in this winter time, when the sun never gets high in the sky, it's coming in and warming the shop somewhat when it's forty below. But and then in the summer, when the sun is higher, the shop is being shaded by by those uh, by those eaves. And you know, it'd be very simple to just build houses like that. Well. And, and I'm not a fan of Phoenix, Arizona. I've been there a couple of times. And I think they've been building way too much. But somebody uh, I have read where now they're putting some kind of white paint on roofs or something. And you're seeing panels. It, I, I don't, to, I don't know if they're all photo, the photovoltaic. They, I mean, or, my God, mm -hmm. they're probably the hottest city in the yeah, and that's the downside of, of panels, though, is they don't do as well in, in the heat. But they still function but uh you can always have hot water panels that well again people that are that will come up with these solutions mm -hmm. is, is wonderful you know They're, i can't remember what city it was i was in, in in arizona where all the roofs had solar panels on them every everyone i thought mm -hmm. that was great i don't know if uh what that was all about but yeah. just environmentally concerned people. Yeah, and, and i remember in la uh, a certain area where uh, they were doing this experiment of um, painting all of their sh their black asphalt streets mm -hmm. white. That's another. And it really big, made a big difference, big difference uh, yeah. for ambient temperatures. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, there there are solutions. We just have to get the politics out of it. We need to figure out how we're going to fund these uh, changes that we feel that need to be made. You know, so that uh, nobody. Um, has to carry the burden by themselves that we don't put family businesses out of business. That would be counterproductive. Very know, much so. Thing. And yeah. I'm a big believer in, yeah, let's help the the smaller family businesses, right. really. As far as the, these windmills here, one of the, 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 the meeting, 
where the, uh, our council decided that we were not going to approve it to be done here. I don't know that that means anything to the actual project or not. Right. One of the things our then mayor pointed out was that we would have all these people here creating these things that will have $40 an hour jobs and will put a bigger crunch on housing. And I don't think he... Oh, and then they also talk about the jobs that would be lost by fishermen because supposedly this is going to destroy the fishing industry. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, jobs are always destroyed, always destroyed. When when cars came in, the people who made buggy whips were losing their right. job. Many years ago, there was a guy I talk about quite a bit, I feel as though I know him, who made uh, Clovis spear points. That's quite a few years ago. And uh, eventually, and he had done that. He was the third generation, made the finest Clovis spear points around and was having a very nice living. He was sending his kids off to... Uh, uh, killing uh, mammoth schools and things like that on what he made. And then slowly there was no longer a need for Clovis spear points. He was put out of work. Yeah, His I'm, kids had to learn how to do something else. Yeah, it's all cyclical, that's for sure. It's yeah. how we handle that, that's the, the real so, question. So the idea of losing fishing jobs here, if that in fact is the case, and I don't think it would be, would be made up easily by the people who have to go out there and tighten bolts and things on you know the maintenance people that are going to keep those things yeah, up. yeah that's going to be huge yeah uh, and maintenance I, it's and the uh, first time i've ever seen a mayor uh bemoaning the fact that we might have good paying jobs here well i don't think it was that i think it would be very short-sighted that, that was the only thing that he was complaining about one of, one of but but the infrastructure Rose's impact voice when he said it too yeah, the infrastructure impact would be tremendous. I mean, we, we, I, we can't find places to rent now. Well, I think maybe they would build them. Huh? Really? Yeah. What, that, would. what happened to the, the thing on the north end of the, uh, the Curry campus up there that was supposed to be built for low I, income? I don't know. Yeah. It, it, and, unless a developer can generally make a profit somewhere along the line, they're not going to get involved in a project like that. Isn't isn't a lot of the wasn't that a lot of that due to regulations and things that the reason that fell through that it would just cost a fortune just to well probably just to get the water lines out yeah. to, you know the the, the project these are things that can be solved they're not uh, insurmountable yeah it is all solvable with the right amount of uh, ingenuity um, you know elbow grease and uh, money sure you can you can uh, accomplish a lot money and 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 planning the little community out of Sacramento I. Grew up in also uh, Loomis. Oh, yeah. Wonderful little community. I lived there for a while. Oh, be darn. Yeah. We'll talk about that some other time. (laughs) Okay. Well, right now, they're just, they're still uh, a little uh, town, not a city. But anyway, they're starting to build, build, build Costco's and Walmart, all of that stuff. But the infrastructure, Mm -hmm. my sister still lives there. She goes, we can't even get through town now. The planning part is like... Shouldn't they handle that first? It's like you were talking about. Okay, let's say the, the wind tunnels are, are are going in, or wind tunnels, I'm sorry. <laughs> wind uh, Windmills. Turbines, windmills. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, maybe we have to think, okay, well, we're going to need housing here, uh, better streets here. you got to handle that along with what what they're planning to do. You, yeah, there's a lot of if-then scenarios that need to be addressed. Again, planning, you know, I think, ahead of time way. to take care of those issues. Because you're right. What if all of a sudden there were, they needed 150 people. Where are they going to live here? Yeah. Well, we were, uh, when, when I retired, my wife and I bought a, um, a motorhome and traveled in the wintertime. And one year, uh, we were in a town north of L.A., maybe 25, 30 miles north of L.A., I think it, we were, and uh, the town looked pretty nice. And then we got out of town a little bit, and we went to Costco, and it, it, you know, it looked like Costco had half the county as a parking. You couldn't find a place to park. You, everything was lines to get. Traffic was unbelievable, and we both people live here on purpose. You know, I, I lived in in Alaska. The closest town to me was about twelve miles away, and eight hundred people. So we we weren't too pleased with traffic all the time, but, and not everybody could live the way we. Did. But by the way, we did live on alternate energy. We had solar panels for a while. We had a windmill, and it worked very well. If you came to our house, you would not know that we were not on the mm-hmm. grid. Sure. You know, and all these uh, alternative energy ideas like solar, wind, it's great as long as Mother Nature cooperates. 
the the minute there's no sun to power the the cells, you you, you have storage to cover that. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, 60, 90 days storage. I mean, there are times when we don't see the sun. Yeah, I know. A, I'm, a while. I, we're in the middle of it now. I would, yeah. if I were on solar panels <laughs> now, I would, uh. but I would have storage, or I would have an alternate something, or other. maybe there'd be a generator we'd kick in for a while. Uh. But we're kind of unique in having month-long rain. Yeah. Things. <laughs> yeah. This isn't the place for solar panels, I guess, is it? I mean, <laughs> no. Uh, but, but wind energy, there it is. I mean, out. The wind, like I said, it's infinite out there as far as I know. Uh, we get plenty of wind offshore. I think the problem is it's just not cost effective. No. I mean, most the, of my, these My industries. garage would, would get about six or seven hours a day of sunlight oh, just coming solar, across okay. it. Okay. And that would be absolutely well, perfect. Well, even wind energy is being subsidized. And that's the other untalked about factor is... Can we do away with the subsidies? Where do the subsidies come from? Oh, they come from your tax dollars. So somebody in Peoria is sending their money into the federal government to send it to somebody on, uh, over in Brookings here to keep the, the you know, windmills going. Well, is that fair? And <laughs> that, that no, is, and no, but that's the way our tax system works, too. I mean, we're sending money to Israel right now and other places well, that yeah. a lot of us Ukraine wish we would uh, yeah. yeah. I and that's another thing I'm unclear on this part. So again, assuming the wind farm is out there, how far how many people does that benefit? I mean, it it only benefits this local area or how far out does it go? Uh, there, I don't know. There's places in England where they I forget the numbers. I just watched it this morning. Uh, they're running towns on the on the, okay. on the. But we're talking about a couple of hundred windmills then. Yeah, and the, the other thing the other I was problem that right. was mentioned. But I don't remember. It was at the council meeting. I've seen it in other places. Oh, I've seen our, our boy Donald talking about the windmills driving whales crazy, and so that concerned me right away. If there's if there's too much environmental damage, then obviously me too. The, the windmills are certainly not worth that. it. But uh, I watched some things this morning by scientists who study whales, and they say, no, the, w the whale die-offs are more caused by the military and searching for um, oil, using the, the sonar to search sonar. for oil, yeah. and just and, and boat traffic, uh, yeah, cargo boat tra ships and things yeah. like that. Yeah. They didn't find any, any evidence at all that the whales were greatly affected by the, by the noise from windmills. And then the gener the electricity that the turbines gener turbines generate, are they going to hook up to the initial like these power lines have been causing, especially where I live, uh, a lot of problems. Are they going to be hooked up to those, uh, or 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 go on a different path underground? That part I just don't know. You know the last I read or saw about these power lines, they talk about people living under these yeah huge power place. lines is that they don't do any harm. But there was a camp I used to go to, a park I used to go to in, in somewhere in Northern California. Uh, there was a dam and a beautiful lake and stuff, a very nice place to camp. And uh, I would ride my bicycle. Well, while I'm riding my bicycle, I was over there during, during the time of the year that, that the baby uh, spiders are, are uh, disseminating. I don't know if you know that they... Yeah, they fly. The, the babies will climb up on a branch, and they they let out a web that acts like a parachute. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, it takes See, off, and they go thousands of feet. Yeah, and I, I would right. I would ride a mile, and I was covered with baby spiders. <laughs> but the other thing Not was my thing. <laughs> the other thing was my my hands were tingling, uh. yeah, and I and I thought, what the, are they biting me on my hands or something? No, I was riding under these power lines. I was getting these little minor electric tingles. So. Yeah, I guess I, was, I don't imagine that did me any good. But I well, no, I, I was going more of the, of the fires that they cause yeah. on the power lines, especially in our wooded areas. If they don't decharge them before. You know. Yeah. I, I, again, I don't know if the turbine offshore are going to go completely underground with new lines. I, that part I don't know. Yeah, well, they'll have to get get it somewhere out of the ocean onto land, then into. Oh, the, there's going to be yeah, yeah, mega cables coming running on the on the ocean floor. Yeah, sure. I, right. From what I read, I don't know. It's all a big question. And if, mm -hmm. they, if they left it up to us three, I don't think we would get any closer to solving it then. <laughs>
We love to the people that know what they're doing. Above our pay grade, I guess. Yeah. But again, overall, if it gets uh, uh, the biggest thing for me is getting rid of, I believe, getting rid of, getting rid of the fossil fuels. I think that's a big deal. Uh, we yes, we have to give it time. We can't just cut it off. But uh, it's it, not not just the burning of it too. It's the collection of it. It's, no, no, right. right. The yeah. collection, the burning, the manufacturing that uses yeah. the fossil fuels. Everything involved in that needs to be done away with if you're yeah. going to actually walk the walk. Mm -hmm. You say no more fossil fuels, great. No more plastic bottles. No more um, plastic IV bags. No more, you know, whatever it is. No, no more uh, interior stuff for your car trim, you know. <laughs> how, about, how, about, how about no more closets full of clothes that you never wear and you still Well, yeah. More? I, I get this thing from uh, uh, North Face. You know, they're running their forty percent off, and I love North Face shirts. They fit mm -hmm. me perfectly. And I'm going through the damn thing. I mean, I'm going to say I've got a hundred and fifty dollars worth of shirts, and I'm going to hit buy. And I said, I don't need any more shirts. I have a walk-in closet that's full of shirts that I never wear, and I'm just going to outgrow these. And so I I didn't <laughs> order them. I was very proud of myself. So if you get really sick of looking at me wearing the same shirt all the time. It's too bad. My excuse is I'm that saving I don't the like world. Laundry. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, it's true. I mean, in Americans are by by and large some of the most prolific over purchasers of stuff. I had a, stuff. I had when I lived in Alaska. I had a friend that came from Russia. And he had lived here for quite a while, so he was kind of used to our ways. But he said his brother came to visit him, and he was just shocked at the amount of stuff we throw away. Yeah. We don't fix anything. But, of course, most of this stuff isn't worth fixing anymore because you can well, buy a Planned new obsolescence, man. Yeah. My, my, my toaster oven went out a couple of days ago. I said, no problem. I'll just look it up in YouTube how to fix my toaster oven. And it was in there. There was literally like 25 screws that you had to take out. And, you know, three different kinds. You know, there was the right. three-quarter inch and all these different. <laughs> and then you get to, and they get to the switch, which I believe was my problem. And it, and it was a, what do they call those? A circuit board on top of another circuit yeah. board. So you had to uh, melt some of the solder on so many things. And uh, I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> no. No. No, you can go and get a new one for 100 bucks. you know. Yep, that's for sure. Well, we're running down for time. Uh, yeah. So great, um, the other, other thing home. just, you know, is, okay, we're talking about stuff. We're talking about uh, dis disposing stuff. What do you do with um, the green energy byproducts, the solar panels that need to be changed out, the blades on the wind turbines? The, the, they're the, non, the, the they're blades non, on the turbines are a problem, and they're working on ways of grinding them up and making something yeah, out of them. So. And they're made, of, they're made out of some pretty nasty stuff that's yeah. hard to grind up and get rid of on purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the magnets in those things are highly yeah, I, toxic. The solar panels are mostly glass stuff, so they can probably be re And I don't know anything about the electronics in them, but they do last a long time. I don't so, know. Yeah, it's it's. Like that old equation, like for every action, there's an equal exactly. and opposite, you know, reaction. So we just need to be aware of that stuff. Yeah. So, well, so it'd be great we. if we can get you folks out there to start thinking about, um, you know, your your impact on the planet and how you might be able to change it, even if it's just little small things. Yeah. Uh, don't let me see basis. you again having the clerk in Fredmar putting your groceries in a bag that they got from under the counter. Bring your own damn bag. That don't cost hardly anything. <laughs> And that being said, <laughs> uh.